Hey, this is Notzer, and this is the port. I'm going to cover all the tips and tricks that I have learned over the course of playing this game. Many people know them, but some do not, and I'm going to help those who do not. This is going to be just like the dynamic crosshair. Information for those who need it, new players or veteran players that, you know, maybe, maybe they never learned it. So let's just cover it all, and let's get started. So first of all, I don't like seeing these giant icons for the ships. They waste a lot of space. Oh, by the way, middle mouse can scroll through this. You don't need to use these arrows. I love to filter it. So I go to the compact carousel and I filter. I can choose two, three, four rows. I go three, you can do whatever you want. And then you can turn on as many filters as you want. If you're looking for a specific ship or type or whatever, you can also enter the name of the ship. Now be careful, it might be a little delayed so if you're a fast typer, it might be jumbled up. I sort of have to slow myself down. But Samson, we filtered Samson, we found Samson. Pretty straightforward. Other filters that exist, elite ships, premium ships, first win of the day. We've got command ships with commanders, ships without commanders. You can also display in the order by nation, by tier, by type, and then by most recent battle. So there's a lot of useful things you can turn on, and I would highly recommend you turn those on. It shrinks down the icons, it makes it more manageable. You basically get to see the side profile that you would see in the bottom left corner. So that's cool. Other things related to the carousel. On the right side, you got gears. Now you have your number of ships listed and vacant slots. That's basically how many ports do you have open. If you don't have a port open, it will ask you to purchase the ship with a port. You cannot buy something without a port slot. I try to buy ports when they're on sale, usually around Christmas, maybe another time during the year. It's 50% off. You get twice as many ports or hangar spots or I don't know, tank factories. So keep that in mind. So click on the gears. What do we see? Well, we see a lot of weird filters. The gears represent anything that isn't kosher, any, anything that's normal. So, for example, if I have weird camouflages, like High School Fleet or the Damage Hunt for Bismarck, it will not display it in-game. That's what these, these little icons with the eye represent. Now you'll notice it's demounting everything that I have in my inventory because I'm completely fine with it. But if you don't like seeing something that isn't quite kosher, you know, it's a little, it's a little out there, you can disable it. It's enabled with the green, it's disabled with the white. There's a little line through it too. Also, if you're not kind of cool with the Arpeggio Blue Steel or the, uh, the Dragon that they released for, I think, the Chinese New Year, you can just turn off the display of that totally. And you'll notice that these ships, now my carousel, are gone. They're not displayed. But these two options are separate. The check mark represents will it be displayed in your carousel. The eye icon is asking, do you want the camouflage displayed in game? Okay. Okay. So just cover that stuff. A couple other things that you might not completely recognize first off is uh you know you could filter by commanders and not sir why do you have so many commanders available why don't you just assign the commander to a ship great question now for most of you you'll probably know this answer but some of you don't know this because wargaming doesn't really communicate this in the game all that well you do not need to assign a commander to a premium ship you can use any, and I do mean any, commander for each faction. That you don't even need to have the same type. So, in past Wargaming products, you would have had to take a premium. Let's, let's say the Kamikaze R. This is a Japanese destroyer, tier 5. Well, in other Wargaming products, I would have to have a Japanese destroyer commander to even use in this ship. You don't need to do that. 
all you need is for it to be of Japanese origin. It doesn't, it could be your battleship, it could be your aircraft carrier, it could be your cruiser commander. There is no requirement that it is the same type in order to freely move these commanders in and out of the ship. So you'll see, okay, we're gonna go, see I, I have my battleships, my my destroyer commanders, and the, the, the sign that it's gonna work perfectly are fully functional is that these icons are white. That means 100% in training, in use. But yeah, battleships, cruisers, I could I could pull my aircraft carrier commander and stick it in my kamikaze. Now, I would not really benefit from the skills that I chose to take, but at least I can do it. I could just play a battle right now if I want to level up my commander for my tier nine Japanese aircraft carrier, I can do it. And that's great and I didn't need to assign it to the premium. So once again, assign your commanders to the regular ships. Don't have an assigned commander. In fact, don't have any commander sitting in your premiums and then move a commander that you're actively leveling up into your premium and use it to speed up the process of leveling. It's a great way to get bang for your buck. I have done this with my battleship. So my Montana and my Missouri, I have my Missouri commander assigned to my Montana. It's Steven Seagal. I know, I know. So he's assigned to the Montana and I, I use him exclusively in my Missouri. I get twice the amount of battles to level it up. Now that it's max level, it is giving me elite commander XP. Now the max level is 19, just, just to make sure. But you'll also notice that on the screen, there's something on the bottom left, Elite Commander XP. What the hell is that, Nautzer? Well, probably about 10 patches ago, they introduced this concept where once you reach max level with your commander, all the Commander XP is dumped into what is called Elite Commander XP. This is sort of free XP for just your commander. And if you're interested, you can use it to redistribute your points on your commander. You might not know that because it's not completely obvious, but when you hover over this doubloon count, it also allows you to choose elite commander XP. This number will go up just as the doubloon goes up based on the level of skill that the commander is. If it's a 19, this is a full price, you know, 475 doubloons or 190,000 elite commander XP. Okay, that's great. Now, let's say that I'm, let's say that I'm going to buy a ship that I want for my inventory, and I'm going to assign a commander from another ship that wasn't previously assigned to it. Are there any tips or tricks that I can use to be more efficient with that assigning process so I don't have to spend all the doubloons Yes, absolutely. So we're going to buy the Zooey home just because it's half off. Why not take advantage of the half off discounts that they put out? So we're going to buy it. Now I could choose to spend doubloons to have a commander with three skills. I could also spend currency or the uh, credits to have one skill in the commander, or I could just do free. I wouldn't recommend free. Why wouldn't you spend? This is, this is dirt cheap. Even this is dirt cheap, but I'm going to choose to not assign any commander to it. And you can, you can toggle these just as everything else. You can hover your mouse cursor over it and it gives you options and what you want to do, right? I'm obviously not going to buy a slot because I already have enough slots and I'm not going to buy a commander. So we purchased the discounted ship and just, it's that little yellow tag. Whenever you see that yellow tag, that means it's under some sort of discount. Not all Wargaming products tell you it's under a discount. I was playing Warplanes and that's not obvious. So, we bought the, the ship. I'm going to assign a commander that isn't assigned to this ship. I'm going to take one of my, my anime characters, you know, for whatever reason, just because they're tens. I'm going to take my, oh, let's see, oh, this Gunza, Gunzu, whatever. We're going to assign him. Now, he's not trained for this ship. We need to train him for the ship. I could choose to spend 500 doubloons, 200,000 credits, or free. And you'll notice that it's got, this number changes, this amount of 
XP, commander XP, you need to earn in battle. So it's 25,000, zero out of 25,000 for basic, halfway for the Naval Academy, and then for the senior command, you get it fully trained. The best thing you can do of both worlds is to buy the credit Naval Academy 50%. It's going to reduce the cost of the commander XP required to fully train it by 50%. You take that credit and what you do is you press this little plus sign. This little plus sign is not completely obvious. This is what you can use elite commander XP. You can funnel your elite commander XP into a commander to train him up. You know, maybe he's one skill away, maybe one point away from concealment. And you've got commander XP, go, go and use it. But what we're going to do here instead is we're going to take that elite commander XP and we're going to finish the rest of that leveling process and make him fully functional for this ship. Now you can take from free XP. It will take from your elite commander XP first. Just make sure everyone knows. And I should be spending 12,500. And that's exactly what we just did. Now, I could also spend it to train up the commander. As I said previously, I'm not going to do that because he's a 10. 10's fine. So we have a commander ready to go assigned to the Zuiho, and we did it in the most optimal way without spending real money. If you've got a great premium like the Missouri, you can make back all the credit you would ever need, and you can save a ton of doubloons. And that's the idea of this, save doubloons. I'm not going to spend the... The, uh, I'm not going to skill the character up because that's not why we're here, but you could skill the character up. Other things that you might be able to do. Well, you need to, I would recommend use premium consumables. They give you an extra charge and they reduce the reload time. It's just too strong to ignore and of course enable it. Upgrades. Upgrades are kind of interesting because they come from your inventory. Now, some of us have a lot of upgrades or some of us have no upgrades. And what I like to do along the same lines as the inventory is I like to sell off the, the stock form of the ship. So obviously I fully unlocked the Zuiho. I'm going to have it fully upgraded, but I don't need to have the old stock variant. Right, that's not really something I value. So what I'm going to do is once I've purchased the upgraded version, I'm going to go back and reclaim some of that currency. And you can do this by going into the inventory. And it's a fantastic way to do it. So you notice this number that you see that's available? That's because I, I have it in my inventory. It's sitting in my inventory and I can choose to sell or keep however many of these modules, even ship modules as I want. It's a great way of saving money, take advantage of the, the discount stuff as well. And in fact, you could buy them on ships that are cheap, sell them, get the, the item back, I believe, without demounting, or I guess you guess you can't do that. But you could do a couple things where you can buy the discounted module and have it sit in your inventory. And that's a great way to then later on, if I need that module for like the British battleships, I could go do that. So let's go to the inventory. It's important you know your inventory too. And I'm going to reclaim the stock modules of that ship. So I go under the modules and you'll notice, oh, look at there. We've got the stock hull and it'll, it'll highlight the fact that it is stock of the Queen Elizabeth. Man, I would like that income. So I'm never going to use the stock module for the ship because it's just a worse version of it. So I'm going to sell it and get that credit income back. Same goes for a couple other ships. Let's go to the Zuiho, the, the example that we're using. Now keep in mind that you might want to keep the flight control for some of these ships because the aircraft, they're sort of, they're sort of side grades. They're not a full upgrade. But look at all these modules that are the stock form. I can reclaim that credit and at least invested in something else it doesn't have to just sit there on the ship waiting and never used ever again because let's face it no one's gonna go back and use the stock version and now you can see oh well i don't own this anymore i could buy it but why would i buy a weaker version 
of my bombers. I wouldn't do that. This one I still own, and that's why I can mount it without having to buy it again. So just make sure that you're taking advantage of that inventory. Don't keep the stock part of a ship just to keep it. You're never going to actually use that again, at least I don't think, unless you're doing some weird online content. Who does that? Who does online content? Now we've got the ship, we've got the commander, we're going to level up the commander, make sure that he's ready to go. It's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of times I could go into a lot of detail with this. I'm not going to on this video. But basically, you want to get to the fourth level as quick as possible. You need one skill per level to move on to the next. And the higher skills are just better. They just, just are better. And I actually made a mistake. I picked concealment instead of air supremacy. But whatever, whatever. So, we've got the modules, we got the ship loaded out. Let's put on the equipment for the exterior. And there's a lot of things we could do. If I am someone who is interested in leveling up the commander, well, there's a couple flags for that. You've got the Zulu Hotel, which is awarded for Confederate. You've got Dragon Flags, which is not really awarded any longer. You have to get them in super containers or... I think you also get them in campaign missions. And then some of these also give you commander XP on top of everything else. Yeah, the Hydra gives you commander XP. I believe, yes, the Red Dragon gives you commander XP. And no, these five on the bottom, these are special. They're awarded for very, very special events. Don't expect a lot of them. But yeah, we're going to level up our commander. And you want to equip it, obviously. You only have four slots on an aircraft carrier, keep that in mind. And you're good to go, right, for Commander XP. If I was someone who's looking to decide on just grinding the ship to the next, the next vessel, if I didn't happen to have every aircraft carrier, then I could put on my XP flag, which comes from Kraken Unleashed. And once again, these, these Red Dragon... The Hydra, they also give me XP. So all of that combined, boy, you're going to level fast through some of these lines if you're trying to actively work through. So make sure if you are someone who, you know, I want to race up the British battleship line, you want to equip equal speed Charlie London. You want to equip any red dragons you might have. You also want to equip any Hydras you might have. There's also other skills that improve your ability to fight fires, your ability to travel faster, protect you from detonation, all those things. I just want to make sure you know that, hey, if you're going XP, get all these flags. Also, if there's a rank season going on, I believe clans will have it. Sometimes you can earn special flags that have bonuses on them. Now, the Military Month Contributor is no longer earnable, but this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Rank Season and Clans, they'll, they're usually award special flags that reduce the cost of servicing for the ship per battle or something. And it'll get progressively better as you improve with your rank. If you're someone who's trying to min-max, you want to put a flag on that has all these benefits because it's just gonna speed up the process you're not going to waste as much time earning it. But for the most part, and this is only available in North America and it was only available two years ago. For the most part, these flags are purely cosmetic in nature and you shouldn't really care that much. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to put a corgi flag too on it because why not? You shouldn't care that much about the bonuses that it, it may or may not give you. It's just for fun. Camouflage is something completely different. You need to make sure that you min-max camouflage. Now, you've got one or the other and then a bunch of combined. So you can have detectability range by sea. So this is going to improve the concealment of the ship by sea. AKA, any ship on the water, this will be what your detection has to be for them to spot you. Now you notice that 7.7 .7 goes to 7.5, which is great. It's just, it's just a buff. And obviously, it gives you a different look. Yeah, who cares about that? It's all about the stats, not so we're min-maxing. Plus 4% to maximum dispersion of shells fired by the enemy when they fire at you. Again, that'll help you avoid incoming fire. 
incredibly important, right? Well, there's a combined version, Type 5. Now, I know, I probably have way more camouflage than you do. But those are the three base camouflage. Then you might have a premium camouflage. And premium camouflage usually cost doubloons. They usually reduce the cost to use the ship and increase the speed of commander training or free XPing or whatever. It's equivalent to some of these higher end flags. Now for Halloween, we've, had, we've got XP earned per battle. Other ones, XP earned per battle, XP earned per battle. These are pretty baseline and yeah, obviously. These are just, exp these are just different versions of type five. You've got type six, which is everything that we talked about, XP per battle, it's bedazzled or dazzling. And then you've got an improved version of that with Ocean Soul, it adds the credit income to it. You've got commander training ones. You've also got access to increased credit income. So if you can, if you're going for credit income, the Gamescom camo is the best. 50% more credit earned per battle is insane. If you ever get Gamescom camo and you might get them through a super container, take advantage, equip them on premiums, min-max your credit income on a premium. And when I say min-max, I mean min-max. Here, let's, let's go to my Missouri. Let's see how it's equipped. So I'm min-maxing my credit income. I got Zulu, 20%. I've got Wyvern, 50%. That's, that's a better one, and they do stack, which is great. Those are the only two that are relevant for credit income here. I can also improve my credit income with Military Month, which probably you can't. And then, under Camouflage, instead of using the premium, because the premium's okay, but it doesn't improve your credit income, I'm using Gamescom, because I'm getting 50% more. And that's what you need to do. Save those credit income camos and flags and stick them on the premium that you can have the most success in the highest tier premium you find the most consistent success for me that's the missouri i win a ton of games i get a ton of credit and one game in the missouri will give me 1.5 million that can pay for a ton of ships and because i've been maxed it's more than i could ever ask for a couple things if you're min-maxing your commander, these FTWs are great. They're sort of a reward, though. Keep that in mind. These uh, fire flags, I believe they're restless fires. This is also great for commander training. What are other good examples of commander training? Yeah, a lot of these are just reskin of the same, the, the XP. This is a free XP one, New Year 2017. It'll increase your free XP. You can also improve your free XP by picking up the Papa Papa flag, which is pretty nice. Free XP will be, you know, this just global thing that you can use to train up new ships or new um, unlocks, anything like that. But yeah, most of most of the camos they do, they're basically the same thing. And then some camos, they've got like crazy crap. Free XP, Commander XP, XP itself. I mean, there's a lot of really powerful flags or really powerful camouflage that you can make use of. But for me... Make sure, if you're going credit, Gamescom. If you're going Commander, go FTW. If you don't have FTW, get Restless Fire. If you are going for XP earned per battle, the best you can do is probably Ocean Soul because it gives you credit income as well. If you don't have Gamescom and you only have Ocean Soul, Ocean Soul is pretty good credit income. 20% is better than nothing. So... Keep all of that in mind when you're trying to min-max. It's really important. Another way you can min-max the game is in the campaigns. Now, the campaign is something that happens. Either it'll be a campaign that has a small window of active uh, completion, or it will be open forever. Science of Victory, open forever. We've got also... Oh, sorry. We've got the... Uh, Honorable service, open until, you know, I don't know, until they decide to do something different. We've got Yamamoto going on. So you'll notice that there's 
stuff that could be issued. Shinoname, this has premium account, which clearly I need. Not this one is a commander, which is very cool. And the idea is you want to progress through the tasks and move on to the next task, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, some of you might be under the impression that the only way to do this is to complete a new task. Not so. So when you complete a task for the first time, you are rewarded the stars and the loot for completing that task. So in this example, you would get 30 November Echo set, set of seven. November Echo, let's just go November Echo. You'll get 30 of those and three stars that will go towards this completion. However, maybe I'm just really bad at shooting down enemy aircraft, and instead I prefer to do something that I can earn 3 million credit. I've already done this one. I've already been issued the 1.5 million credits, but I can re-up the t I can redo the task, choose it again, and I will still be awarded the stars that that task originally awarded. And yeah, if you just click it again and set it up, it'll be sort of faded out, but you will still be awarded the number of stars that that task would normally award. And that is a great way to skip over some of these annoying objectives like, I'm never going to shoot down 30 enemy aircraft when there's no aircraft carriers, or I'm not going to ever defend, earn the defended ribbon seven times with the battleship in a single battle. That's just not going to happen. So that's that's another thing that you could take advantage of and damn it now and now the task is not there. But yeah, yeah, you get the idea. You could redo tasks and earn those stars to progress through other tasks that you just just aren't aren't possible for you. Also keep in mind that you get access to these little crates. You could choose between I believe flags, camouflage, module equipment and test your luck. I highly recommend you roll for the flags. Now, the reason is because you cannot earn the flags by playing the game. You have to earn the flags through other means. If I were to earn the modules that are going to equip on the ship, that's basically credit. How much credit can I earn, right? I can always earn credit. That's not a big deal. You're not going to get access to special modules that you can only get on those. They have the same chance to roll super, and a super container has a chance of rewarding ships that you can either buy or not buy. You can also earn doubloons and tons of the, the elite camouflage like Gamescom and stuff like that. But I always go for the flags because flags... I mean, look at what some of these flags reward. I mean, it just is so important to have tons of flags. If you want to, you can sell the flags too. You can sell the camouflage as well if you have too much inventory. All that's sellable. The only thing that you can't sell, well, you can't sell the, the flags that are just for visual. You can sell the signal flags, but not the flags that just, you know, the pirate flag. You can't sell that. But yeah, that, that's, that's my optimal strategy. Make sure the container is set on the flags. I've tried test my luck. I've got terrible luck. It, it never works out for me, so I never do it. So yeah, we've set up the ship. We've assigned the modules. Some ships have access to special modules. You see this little plus sign? That means that that is a module that comes from a super container or through ranked slash clan unlocks these are modules that they are very unique they're supposed to be side grades but some of them are really strong there is a module for for radar signal radar and it is it's just making you a better ship and that's what the plus sign means if you if you have it in your inventory great you can't just unlock it though it's just all completely lucky rely on that super container if you can't get it, you can't get it. So hopefully this was useful for anyone who's interested. You can toggle between the operations. This is the PVE content, clan battles, which will eventually become available. Ranked mode is when 
the season isn't for clan. Co-op battle, obviously, play against others. You can also turn on team, uh, what is it called? Um, there's sort of like a team battle or team training battle. Training mode. You turn on the training mode by going into your World of Warships folder and I think it's preferences or something and you just enable it. That's the way you turn it on. Combat missions, you know, fulfill the objectives, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea with that stuff. There's not a lot of nuance to that. And yeah, you got your armor layout. You can toggle on and off stuff. It's important that you understand that, but that's all That's all obvious. The stuff that isn't obvious is the, the retraining the commander or selling your stock variant of the ship, making sure that you can turn on a task that you've already been able to complete so you can progress in the campaign. That stuff's what's critically important, and it's not completely obvious because they just don't tell you. Or min-maxing your income or your commander XP or your free XP. If you do all that stuff, you would be surprised how quickly you can get through whatever you're trying to do. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helped teach someone something. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you next time.